Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison out of StampAbove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator in the United States. Today I'm going to be sharing a technique with you called blackout embossing. Now I've shared a technique similar to this but we're going to be using some different mediums to achieve this technique and I'm really excited about it because I had so much fun. Let's get our supplies out, turn this camera around, and I'll show you exactly how to do the blackout embossing technique. I'm going to be doing this technique in two different ways. So what I've got here is some of our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton. It's really, really good quality. You get 10 uh, 5 by 7 sheets in a pack. So I have taken my piece and I've cut it down to two and three quarters by four and then I've got a plain piece of basic white cardstock for my other technique with this technique. So we're going to get tons and tons of techniques today. First thing I wanted to do is the embossing. So this is called blackout embossing. You want to do this more so with your 3D embossing folders, and those are the ones that are really thick and leave a very deep impression. This one is called Dotted Circles 3D Embossing Folder, and the one thing that I have to tell you about this technique is you're going to do this technique on the deboss side. So you've got the raised side and the um, inverted side, so we call it embossing is raised and debossing is the opposite. So what I did is I took my layer of Fluid 100 watercolor paper and I set it in here so that it was up here with the label, the, the um, logo facing me. And I embossed this in the dotted 3D, dotted circles 3D embossing folder. So here comes that little piece right here, okay? And then the second technique I'm going to do, I'm going to use basic white instead of watercolor paper in the Seaside Wishes hybrid embossing folder. And again, this is a 3D embossing folder. And I'm just gonna lay that right in here and emboss the entire layer. And this is what I get. Now, to do the uh, blackout embossing technique, you're going to turn your layers over to the other side so they are indented. I'm going to do this one first. I wanted to use watercolor paper because I'm going to use the water painters. There are three different water painters in a pack. We've got a very fine bristled brush, a medium, and then a great big brush. I'm just going to use the medium one for this. What I have here, let me move this out of the way, is three acrylic blocks. Any type of a non-porous dish, cup, whatever you want to use will work for this. But I like to use the blocks because I always have them in my office. I've got Coastal Cabana ink, Lemon Lime Twist ink, and Berry Burst ink for some very colorful choices, right? We're going to just ink up our acrylic block. Get that good and inky lemon lime twist and berry burst. And it's fun to try different color combinations with this technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my aqua painter. Oh, I also have my little Wyoming shot glass that my friend Barb gave me. And I'm going to use that just because I know that I need a lot of water and it's going to be easier to clean my brush using that. So I'm gonna start off with my Berry Burst. I don't think it really matters which one you start off with, but you'll notice I have a pretty good pool of water here. So I'm just going to start by adding water to my dots. And I'm kind of going every third set of dots because I'm using three colors. If you're using the same color, you could just paint the whole thing. And I'm just getting my color in to those dots. And then I'm gonna skip two sets of dots here. Let's see, one, two, let's just do this one with the pink. I like the pink, it's a pretty color. And get some more water on here. And just let that water pool in those dots. I'm getting those little dots too.
I just wanna make sure that water is in all those dots. Now this is watercolor paper. So if you wanted a lighter version of this, you could definitely use more water, which would make this a little less time consuming. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to grab a tissue. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna squeeze some of the water out of here and just get some of that pink off of there so I don't pollute my whole little dish of water here with pink. And I just wanna clean my brush. Now I'm gonna go for the lemon lime. And again, oh, this, I have more water in this one. So this is gonna be a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna go into these tiny little dots. I love doing techniques techniques like this. Every single one is gonna turn out different. Oh, I see I kind of got my, I got my green mixed with my pink and that makes kind of an ugly color. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay, again, clean my brush. And now I'm going to go, boy, my coastal doesn't seem like it's very juicy. I might have to juice that up a little bit. Oh, that seems to be better now. Add some ink to my ink pad when we're done here. And now I'm gonna come in, just color in these. Now that water paper is going to absorb the water, right? So that's kind of a plus in this situation. I'm not going to have that water just sitting there pulled up the whole time and it's not going to take a tremendous amount of time to dry. But I would recommend that you just set this aside and let it dry. So you do this first, then you can like figure out what you're going to do with it. That's what I did. Design my card. I'm going to get a little bit more of that Coastal Cabana. And again, put in some water on there so it's nice and thick. Oh, I missed, I missed my end here. I needed to do lemon lime twist there. So I'll go back and do that. And I'm also doing these little tiny dots. You can leave some, you can leave them white, you can do whatever you want with it, but I'm hopefully going to fill them all in. Okay, let's see how I did. I left those. I'm going to grab these and make them pink because I see I got some pink into some of them. So I just, I'm going to be consistent with my berry burst color. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to let this dry and I'm just gonna kinda, if you need to, you can actually um, hit this with the heat tool. Where did I just see a dot that wasn't colored? I don't know, I thought I just saw one. Oh, this one right here. <laughs> I'm like, no, I know I saw a dot. And again, I'm only doing the inverted dot. So we're gonna just kinda set this aside right now and I am going to bring in that seaside Wishes embossing folder, and we're gonna do something a little different. Now these I take into my um, bathroom or kitchen, whatever's closest to you, and I just rinse them off. But just for purposes that I don't have to leave my desk and come back, I'm just gonna to toss those or hit those with my tissue to wipe them off. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here with Blending brushes. This is just a different way to do this. And this is the way that was taught to me. Um, but I wanted to try the watercolor. Okay, so I've got Berry Burst and I am just going to come in and just, and again, we're not working with the raised side. We're working with the um, debossed side, inverted side, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to come in here and add some color to my layer. I just put it, I, I rub it off on here so I don't get these big globs. And I don't know that it's really going to matter for this technique, but that was Berry Burst. This is the Lemon Lime Twist. I just want all of these colors to be someplace in here on my project. And you're going to see we kind of are creating like a little rainbow with this and then these are a mini 
blending brushes, small blending brushes. I really like these for, especially for a project like this. I forgot to wipe that one off on my paper, but that's okay. And I do want this color to be a little bit darker. So maybe I'm not going to blot it off on my paper. And what I'm doing here is getting my color down into all those tiny little dots, like little sand. They're little sand pebbles is what they are on this embossing folder. So I'm gonna get that color all over. Now this is my um, ink pad that needs some re-inking. Hey, look how pretty that is. A little different for a seashell or sand dollar card. Okay, now that we've got that, oh, hang on, I just stuck my finger in my ink. My fingers are dirty. I've been playing with this all morning. It is kind of a dirty little, <laughs> or dirty little secret. It's a dirty little technique, but it's so fun. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Memento Black ink pad, and I am going to start rubbing it right on top of my project, you know, like, whoa, Kelly, what are you doing? I think this is so neat. Okay, I could leave it like this, or I can keep going and really make it black. It's completely up to you what you like. And now I'm pressing pretty hard, and especially I'm kind of directing my ink pad to the flat raised surface all in here. And this is called an embossing blackout technique. You might have might remember I did this with the uh, floral 3D embossing folder, and I used blends, and that was a different technique. That was debossing with blends, I called it, because we have embossing and debossing, and we're using the debossed side. So you could make this really, really, really dark, right? Now, I do recommend that you have a baby wipe handy. Oh, I'm like, where did my baby wipe go? Because I'm just going to wipe my fingers off so I don't get any black ink on to the rest of my layers for the cards that we're going to make. Now, oh, we still need this. So we're going to set this aside. And of course, do you have a bunch of color combinations running through your head? Because this is just kind of bright and fun colors. You could do this with all kinds of colors. I'm gonna take my tissue. I can see that I've got some pooling water in some of those little dots. So I'm just gonna take my tissue here, wipe this off. I'm gonna grab a heat tool and heat it so it dries quick. I'll be right back. One thing I wanted to mention, if you find that the watercolor paper is curling up, you can see it's kind of curling up. Once you've got your layer dry, turn it back over and hit it with that heat tool and it will lay back down. It's kind of a neat little, neat little thing that it does. And again, if you do this ahead of time and just set it aside, it'll dry on its own. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this layer with the dotted circles embossing folder and I'm gonna come in with that black ink and I'm just rubbing it around. That's gonna take a little bit more ink to cover this up because this is a more porous paper. Um, I'm gonna grab my tissue to hang on to it so I don't get covered in black ink. And I'm really tilting this and pressing it down onto my cardstock. And I've been playing with this all morning so my ink pad is probably getting a little weak and also needs to be uh, have some ink refill put in it. Turn it around here. There we go. We can kind of direct the edge of that to get in there where we need it to go. Oh my gosh. Look how cool this is. Wow, right? It's just kind of a really spectacular little technique. Okay, let's clean this up and I'll show you how to make a card with one of the layers. Make sure you wipe your fingers off. You don't want any black to smear on anything. What I have here is 
the Full of Life Designer Series paper. This is a beautiful, beautiful watercolored six by six pack of designer paper. And again, it's called Full of Life. And it's just makes me very happy. It's just a very pretty, happy pack of paper. So I've got a card base, five and a half by eight and a half. I've already scored that at four and a quarter. I'm gonna move some of these things out of the way. And I'm going to bring in a four by five and a quarter inch piece of the Full of Life Designer Series paper. We're gonna add that right to the front here. Then I have a piece of, look, I've gotten it, I've gotten my fingerprints all over it. We'll use this side, not that it matters because we're gonna cover it up. This is, this is two and three quarters by four. This is two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. And I'm going to add this paper. Now, because this is watercolor paper, you might wanna use some Seal Plus, which is a tape runner, or make sure that you get glue all around the outside of your layer to make sure it lays down nicely. Okay, now I used the Spotlight on Nature die, one of these little circles with Berry Burst, and then I stamped high with Lemon Lime Twist in a Stylish Shapes basic white circle. And that's what I'm gonna use to put on my card front here. So let's get our glue out here again. And I'm gonna put this right over here. So I've got it pretty close to the right side of my card and I'm centering it from top to bottom. And we're going to add this to our little circle. I love the Spotlight on Nature dies. They are so pretty. So many different circle options with those. Oops. Get some dimensionals on here. I like to use my take your pick tool to pop those dimensionals off the back. And then we're going to just set this right down in here. It looks like it has belonged there from day one. My card needs a little bow. So I'm going to grab the black Baker's Twine out of the Baker's Twine Essential Pack. You get five different colors in here. And I'm gonna tie a bow with my bow jig. And let's do a double. So I just wrapped it around there twice. And I'll grab my mini glue dots here. Where should I put my little bow? I just felt like it needed a little something else. Right up here. Or should I tuck it down in here? Get a hold of my take your pick tool so I can function. <laughs> I think I'll put it right up on here. That looks good. I'm gonna drop that right on here. And put our little bow right there. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely what my little card needed here. Now on the inside, I shouldn't have glued this together yet because I always tell people don't glue anything together. What if you make a mistake? I'm gonna use the Berry Burst ink and the high, by the way, is coming from the Friends for Life stamp set. Uh, there's also some dies here someplace that I cannot, I must not have gotten them out. I'm not gonna use them for this card, but I'm gonna stamp this friend. Ooh, that turned out really good. And then there are some little hearts in here and I thought those would be really cute if I did them in a lemon lime twist. It's right there, ooh, fun, colorful, pretty. Isn't that cute? 
very cute. Let's see, I've got a piece of the designer series paper here. Oh, I was gonna put that over here, but I kinda didn't do that in time. So I think I'll just add it right in here. I'm gonna run some glue right along there. And I'm gonna push this right up to where it folds in half just to add that little pop on the inside of my card. I always love to decorate the insides. I feel like the party should not be over when you open a card. It should keep going. Oh, that turned out really nice. Last but not least, we're gonna give it a little bit of bling. So how about some of our rhinestone basic jewels? And I think I'll do one right there get a whole bunch of these in a pack so I always like to just kind of here's a medium size one kind of put a bunch of them on there's tons <laughs> lots and lots maybe one more how about another medium one <gasps> what do you guys think isn't that fun how about a little bit of fun on our envelope I think I'll stick with the little hearts. Looks good. Here we go. This is called Blackout Embossing. Now, do you want to see what I did with this one? Uh, I've got one more tip to share with you. So this is the watercolor, the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is basic white cardstock and you can see that the colors don't stay as vibrant. I just did the berry burst on here but you could certainly use basic white if you don't have the fluid 100 watercolor paper to do this technique and then with this one right here I added it to a Coastal Cabana card base. I put some um, crumb cake, a crumb cake layer in there this is from the Seaside Wishes stamp set and set of dies. You can see I die cut that little sand dollar or whatever that thing's supposed to be. I love it, but is it a sand dollar? I don't think so. It's some type of a coral. That, that would be better. And some linen thread. Sometimes the simplest things mean the most. And it says you absolutely made my day. So we've got a great friend card and another great friend card using the blackout embossing. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and this technique today. Here's my current host code. If you would like to place an order, please use that code. I really appreciate it. You're going to find my online store at www.estampabove. Um, only U.S. residents are able to place orders with me. This is a blog hop with the Totally Techniques design team. So please make sure you click right up here. That's not only going to take you right to the blog post with all the dimensions and still photos of these projects. It's also going to, as you scroll down the screen on that particular blog post, you're going to find some little thumbnails where it tells you how to hop along. You're gonna click on one, it's gonna take you to a new blog. They'll have the same thing on there. You click on that, it'll take you to another blog. But I encourage you to go see what everybody made with this blackout embossing technique. I'm really excited to see the projects today. And of course, you guys, I so appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend it with me. Please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe right down here. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. I'd be happy to send you the catalogs. Pop me an email at kelly at estampabove.com. Click that link up there to go hop. There's also going to be a link right under this video that will take you to this blog post where you can find the blog hop and be able to join in on that. I love seeing the same technique used in a whole bunch of different ways. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Have yourselves a fantastic Friday. Bye-bye.